Hi folks, I wanted to make a quick video about um, some new sculpting features in Blender. So if you haven't been following Blender development, uh, if you have been following Blender development, you would know that Pablo Dubarro, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, probably not, but you'll know that this guy has been doing some insane uh, improvements to the Blender sculpt mode. So, um, and today I really want to talk about one of the most exciting ones to me, which um, if you if you're not familiar with with uh, Blender sculpting or, or uh, how sculpting works in general, you might not be too excited about this, but um, this to me is like a game changer completely. Um, so uh, we'll start off here in, oh yeah, I, I should mention, if you want to test this out yourself, you can go to builder.blender.org and just go down here to Blender 2.9 Alpha and just download this one, um, unzip it, run it, and you can try this out for yourself. So let's get into this. Um, so we start off here with ZBrush. And um, you can see here in ZBrush, I've got a pretty heavy mesh. It's got, according to this, it's got 8.2 million tri um, polygons. So it's quite heavy. It's got all this poor detail. And my workflow, my workflow often involves um, exporting uh, high resolution meshes uh, from ZBrush into Blender so that I can, so that I can uh, do baking stuff and uh, prepare them for like further parts in the pipeline. Um, so what I would normally do is just uh, go up here um, and decimate this mesh to sort of remove unwanted details. The problem with this is that the mesh quality does suffer. It turns everything into like these tiny little triangles and it's really difficult to work with this, really difficult to uh, change, do any uh, meaningful changes after you've decimated it. So the point is it's a really destructive kind of workflow. So, um, but I just exported this thing um, with with its highest level subdivision. So you can see here, it's got a bunch of subdivisions. Um, and this is one of the one of the things, if you're wondering that makes ZBrush so so good for sculpting is that you can you can do like changes on a, on a very low, oh, I can't do this now. It's got some modifiers on it here, but you can do changes on like really low level and then all the higher level uh, pores and stuff are still kept. So basically that's how, how this works. And Pablo has now basically implemented this in, in Blender. So I've exported this mesh on its highest level subdivision, uh, really dense mesh. Um, it's in Blender here. Uh, if you turn on the statistics here, you can see it's got uh, faces, 8.2 million faces, really dense. Uh, if I go into wireframe mode, you can see that's the wireframe. And so the thing with this is if you wanted to make any real changes to this mesh, you'd have to go back into ZBrush, re-export, come back out here. Um, and also just for sculpting in general, like it would be just a nightmare. So good luck trying to, to do any meaningful changes on this mesh. But so what Pablo has done, is here in the, if you select the mesh and here in the modifiers uh, section here go down to multi-resolution if you add this in you'll see that uh, let's just give it a moment there it is uh, you'll see that there's a bunch of new buttons here um, delete higher unsubdivide all of this but the one uh, I really want to focus on today that's really exciting is this um, rebuild subdivisions so if you click this, it's going to take a while, uh, depending on how heavy the mesh is. So I'm just going to click this and we'll do a little timer thing here that I've got just to see how long it takes. So it'll take a while depending on the, um, uh, on the mesh density. I should probably also close this. It doesn't eat up all my RAM. And there it is, it took about a minute and 10 seconds. This isn't entirely consistent. Like I've I've gotten like two minutes for the same exact mesh and stuff like that. So, but uh, yeah, about a minute. And it's, uh, you'll see nothing with mesh has really changed. But if you check this out, there's a bunch of new numbers here. And these are called subdivision levels. Now, if you, uh, if I turn on wireframe mode and uh, turn off, so you can see what's really going on here. Uh, you can see you still got the dense mesh here, but if I go back here into subdivision four, three, if I go down, you can see it 
getting less detailed. So it's built a bunch of subdivisions according, uh, it's, it's like rebuilt all those subdivisions from ZBrush. And this, if, you, if you're into sculpting and if, you, uh, if you're doing high level work and doing a lot of detailed work, this is like insane because it completely changes the paradigm of how you how you sculpt. So I'm just going to demonstrate here by going into sculpt mode. So normally, if I try to if I try to modify this mesh, it's like you it's kind of difficult because you can only do so much on such a high level mesh. But let's say, for example, I wanted to just close the mouth. Well, I could do it on the highest subdivision, but uh, detail would suffer. There'd be there'd be um, and it would just be difficult in general. But what I can do now is just go down to say subdiv level one and check this out. It's it's now on like the lowest, almost the lowest one. It's that's the lowest zero, and then one uh, is this. And now I can just uh, take my grab brush and turn on um, turn on topology masking. Um, and then I can just go in here and sort of close the mouth. And if you go back to subdiv level five, you see it's kept all those details. It's got them all. There's no there's no glitching like there used to be. Uh, there does appear to be a glitch that happens when I sort of change the view, but that uh, I don't know. It's just a little little glitch. But um, yeah, this is insane. This is this is like a whole new ball game now. It changes everything with sculpting. Because now I can I can literally come in here with um, let's say with, with a mask brush, right, um, and just uh, smooth this out a little. And I'll demonstrate, do a little demonstration here. What I mean. Let's say I wanted to change the pose of this this character, right? I've got all my detail. I don't want to lose any of the detail, but I do want to change the pose. I want her to look in a different direction, right? I'll just use the pose brush here. Uh, turn off symmetry, obviously. And then just make her look in a different direction. Simple as that. And you're saying, well, what happens to all the detail then? Well, there's a little glitch here. I think it's the mask. So I just Alt M and yeah, the mask is out. But look at this. All this detail has been preserved. Every last pore appears to be perfectly where it should be. There's no, there's no like funniness going on. If you used the this uh, the multi-res modifier previously, you'll know that this was an absolute nightmare to do. It, it simply didn't work. It just didn't work. But now we've got all of this here. Um, let's say let's say I wanted to do some more changes. Let's say I wanted to let's go to subdiv level three. And let's say I wanted to do the the tendons here in the neck. I want them to be a bit more visible, right? The muscles here in the neck. So what I could do is just take my clay brush and sort of do this. But then you see it's got these lines, right? And what if I smooth this? Well, you say, well, if you smooth this, you lose the pore details because you're smoothing over the pores, right? Well, no, because the pores are on a higher level subdivision. So I smooth out this. smooth it all out let's make it look and maybe even do a little bit of volume fixes here right just to make it look kind of natural you can do the other side as well again we've got these lines smooth them out and now if you go back back up to level five just wait for this and see it keeps the the volume but it also keeps the pores and that is ins insanely useful that is like a whole game changer um uh, this was just a simple demonstration of what you could use it for. I plan on making a few more videos because there's a lot of use cases for this. There's a lot of different things you could do with this um, this simple uh, button, uh, Rebuild Subdivisions. It's really useful, especially if you combine it with the quad remesher. Um, like, for example, you've got a really messy topology and you use a quad remesher, reproject it, rebuild it subdivision levels. Um, I'll be doing, s probably, I, I really want to do a video uh, covering that as well because it's incredibly powerful uh, feature if you use it right so but yeah thanks for watching this um really excited about this uh ooh, look at this here <laughs> fix that i gotta fix that um i think the entire skull kind of deformed a bit when i turned the head there but uh, yeah it's magic look at that so i'm really excited about this really um i see a lot of uh, a lot of 
insane new sculpt sculpting work coming out of Blender now now that we've got this. Um go and absolutely go and follow Pablo. He's he deserves like all the followers. He this guy deserves a medal, I think. Because this this feature has been missing from Blender for dec for for a decade, um, and it's an absolutely essential feature, I think. So uh, and he's doing all kinds of other stuff, which I should probably um, cover as well. Like he's doing the cloth brush and everything. Uh, so really excited about this. I also want to talk about some of the other features he's been doing, uh, called the uh, these um, like the, the the group brushes, right? Really really excited about this. Um, and I want to do some videos about that as well, but I first have to learn how they work too. So uh, if you got any tips for me, if you got any uh, suggestions for for cool feature videos I could do, definitely let me know in the comments. Um, thanks for watching this. I will see you guys soon, hopefully. Um, cheers.